So one of the questions I often get asked is what type of golf ball should I be using? Now it's very particular to the player themselves because there's a lot of factors that you have to cover. Budget, number one. Do you want to spend £3.50 on a golf ball? Are you more likely to spend 50p to a pound on a golf ball? What are you looking for? Are you looking for something that feels a bit harder, feels a little bit softer? Are you want something that sounds a bit clickier or sounds a little bit more rubbery when you hit it? Are you looking for a ball that spins more? Are you looking for a ball that spins less? So it's very particular to the person. But what I'm gonna do over this next sort of five to six months is do a ball comparison. I'm gonna take golf balls that are available in the shops that you can buy and tell you basically what the benefits are of that golf ball and who it is most likely to suit. So we're looking all the way from the Pro V1 down to a budget golf ball, whether it's a, I don't even know what one is now, a Pinnacle or a, the low end of the Titleist, the low end of the uh, the Srixen golf balls, whatever it may be. If there's golf balls that you want testing as well, guys, leave me a comment down below and I will get those um, on the channel here and tell you which which ball would be better suited for your style of play. So today's golf ball that we're going to be looking at is this one, the Mizuno RB Tour X golf ball. I've been sent a load of these golf balls. I've been testing it now. When I was out in Dubai, I, I played with these the whole time I was there. I did a little bit of testing before we got shut down here in England, just trying them out on the course. I literally managed to get one round in before we... Uh, found out that we were getting locked up. And then I've been here in my home simulator doing a test. And that's one of the other factors that's gonna feature in this video. I'm gonna take a seven iron and a pitching wedge and I'm gonna get my average carry distance and my average spin numbers, just to give you a rough guide of, to see how each ball performs against one another. So if you were looking for a, a more spinnier ball, you could maybe use this as a bit of a guide to do that. Or if you're looking for one that goes a little bit further, maybe base it on my numbers. But I think the big thing is that you have to try these golf balls out, go and find out which one is best for you. And ball fittings are something that are becoming a lot more popular with manufacturers nowadays. But like I say, maybe use this guide if you can't get to one of those. Um, to pick the right golf ball for you. So let's dive into the Mizuno golf ball and see what it's all about. So who is the Mizuno RB Tour X aimed at firstly? Well, it's a premium golf ball. It's aimed to run alongside your Titleist, your high-end Shrixen, your high-end TaylorMade, like your TP5s, your Callaway Chrome Softs. It's aimed in that particular bracket. So you would say that maybe the person who is conscious of performance is probably gonna be wanting to look at this golf ball. Um, the person who is not too worried about spend on a golf ball, if you're not looking at price point being the big factor of this golf ball, because the big thing that I first always look at when I was looking at doing this series was, well, what is the price of a golf ball nowadays? Because when I was you know, a junior and was buying Pro Vs when they first came out in the shop, they were 9 99 a sleeve. And pretty much now the average is 15 pounds a sleeve. And we're looking at circa you know, 45 pounds for a dozen Pro V1s. So the thing with the, the Mizuno ball here, it comes in at 39 pounds 99 on average, um, as I've looked across a couple of websites. So it's coming in that little bit cheaper against the Pro V1, so that might be a factor to um, sway people from the Pro V1 because I think with the premium golf market, there is that trusted, that tried relationship with the Pro V1 that people just automatically go into the Pro V1. So I think if the, the manufacturer like Mizuno, who are making a ball that is aimed at the premium player in the premium ball market, if they knock that price point down, they might have a chance of actually swaying some people over. So the ball is a four piece construction, seeing different layers as we're going through it. And it's got what Mizuno call their C dimple, the cone dimple, as they've um, put 12 years of testing into this, which is meant to reduce the drag of the golf ball. So when we see it flying, we're meant to not see as much deviation because the wind isn't taking as big an effect on the dimple. Basically, the, the dimple is like so, and then it has another miniature dimple inside the dimple um, 
structure, which, like I say, has this cone effect and causes less drag. When testing it myself out on the golf course, I would say that um, obviously human error plays a factor in how much curvature is on the golf ball, but I definitely didn't see as much shape with my driver when I was hitting drivers. Um, I wasn't noticing as much cut as I normally would do um, when I was starting to lose some in the past. I was seeing more and more uh, shape, but again, that's down to me having my clubs fit properly and me working on my swing a little ball a little bit. How much does that ball play in? But that's what Mizuno are saying. They've said they've got the, the C dimple, itch, which is resulting in drag. It's meant to be a mid to low spin with the driver, which I would say, you know, was pretty true. Um, We'll get a little bit more of a numbers wise when we get into the seven iron and the wedges shortly. But um, using using the driver, using the irons, I noticed when hitting them there into you know decent greens, obviously out in Dubai at the, um, the Jumeirah Estate where they play the DP World, the ball was stopping. It was literally firing in, would be one stop um, on those greens. Maybe when we get onto a slightly firmer green that's uh, not as grainy as well, I might see that they might release a little bit more on you know, a little bit more on course testing if I was on the links round, you know, round here that we tend to play a little bit more. Um, around the greens, it did have a little bit of check. Now, me personally, I'm not someone who spins the golf ball a lot. So I'm looking for something that I can get distance with, but also generate a bit of spin with my wedges. They say that this ball is um, a high spinning ball around the greens. I would say I didn't, I found it to spin, but not as much as I would probably like again could be down to technique like I say i don't generally spin the ball as much so for me it might be that i go over to the rb um tour ball not the x one which would be a little bit more of a softer golf ball and a, a higher spinning ball around the greens but i found it to be okay in terms of durability what i've did was um, hit 10 shots out of a bunker around the green and then i've also used one golf ball for my test here in the simulator. One thing I did notice was that it wasn't scuffing up a lot. There wasn't big cut marks in it. As we can see there, 20 shots in the simulator and the ball looks almost brand new. Um, there is a, a little bit of a scuffing on the paint, obviously hitting against the net, but um, after hitting 10 wedges and, and 10 seven irons, not a lot going on. And those out of the bunkers, especially, you know, decent sand, fresh grooves on the new wedge not seeing much cut up at all there. Um, so I would say the, the performance of the golf ball in terms of the durability, if you're looking for a ball that you know you can play at least a couple of rounds with maybe, this this would hold up. You know, if you're not obviously hacking it on paths and chopping it out of a bunker every single hole and you know in terms of you just hitting a few greens and a few fairways, I would say that I've I've played with these balls now and you know, use the same ball a couple of times and not notice these massive scuff marks, which you do see with some premium golf balls. That brings me on to the sort of feel of the golf ball. It it feels soft, but not as not as soft as I would like. Obviously, it is the firmer of the golf balls, um, and w and when chipping, it did feel a little bit clicky to me. Again, that is my personal preference. I like it to feel a little bit softer, so probably. Going for the RB Tour in this Mizuno lineup would probably, you know, check that box for me that it would sound a little bit almost duller and sound, uh, feel a little bit softer as I'm chipping with it. But again, that's probably why we're getting such good durability out of it because of that slightly firmer cover on the golf ball. Okay, so performance wise in terms of numbers, and like I say, I'm going to use these as benchmarks for for each of them and it'd be good to get the Pro V1 on here as well with the new one coming out just to have that as sort of the, the benchmark standard as it were because that's what we know as the premium golf ball. But what I did was hit 10 shots with a pitching wedge and 10 shots with a seven iron on my GC2 and my FSX software. And I wanted to get an average of my spin numbers and I also wanted to get an average of my carry numbers to see where they sit. Normally, I would see that my seven iron would spin about 7,000 RPMs and a pitching wedge would spin about 10,000 RPMs with a carry on the pitching wedge being about 127 and a carry on my seven iron being about 173. So as we see there with the pitching wedge, 8,819 RPM on average with a carry of 126. So the carry number is pretty much there or thereabouts. 
um, with the with the pitching wedge. The spin though for myself, as we can see there, it's a full you know 1,200 down of where I'd roughly want to see that number. So when hitting into the greens, like I say, not quite getting that spin I would want. I'd want it to stop as soon as it hits that green or have that one bounce and a little bit of zip on it. I don't want to see that there would be any release. And obviously, they're pretty well-struck shots there. I hit all these pitching wedges pretty nicely. I think there was one that was slightly healed that brought it down ever so slightly. But if I was middling it with clean glue, clean, clean grooves and a fresh golf ball, I would like to see that that number would be a little bit more towards that 10,000 number. In terms of the 7-iron, we can see there, like I'm saying, I'm expecting my 7-iron to carry 173. And again, I hit those pretty well. There were two dud ones in there that carried about one, um, 163, where I just didn't quite catch them, got a little bit healy with both of them and they dropped out of the sky. But again, if we look at the spin number, hovering around that 6,000 number. It's not quite what I want. Again, I want a little bit more spin from it. But if you're the person who is saying that they are spinning their irons too much and you feel that you're getting a bit of a balloon stally flight, Mizuno RB Tour X, great golf ball to see that that could bring those spin numbers down for you. For me, like I said earlier, someone who doesn't spin the ball as much as they would like, I've got to find that balance between not spinning it too much with a driver, but getting the control I want from my irons. I did see less drag and see less shape on the golf ball, but I would like to see just a little bit more response when I, um, when I am in and around the greens. So, overall, a pretty decent golf ball. I think the price point's right at that $39.99. That's a great way to try and, like I say, try and get a few of the premium golf ball users um, away from the Pro V1 just by knocking five quid off the price. You know, that could be the big sway. Spin-wise, I would class this as a lower spinning golf ball. Um, Distance-wise, you're going to get pretty good distance from it and feel just that slightly on the firm side. Um, one thing I would say that I would love to see Mizuno do Instead of having the Mizuno logo on the golf ball, I'd love to just see the Mizuno writing with that, even that M, just the M on the golf ball, or the just Mizuno rope in their, in their style. I think, you know, we see TaylorMade with their name on it, Callaway, Titleist, Shrixen. I just think Mizuno would look better on that golf ball, but, you know, that's my personal opinion as we go through it. So... Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video this week. Like I said, this is going to be a series where I test any golf ball that you want to recommend at me. So just get down into the comments, whether it's, you know, a pinnacle ball or a, a mid-range titleist, a new Strixon one. I've got a, a stack of golf balls over here that I am ready to test. So it'll be great to get out on the golf course soon as well. Also, obviously, I can't swing drive it in my sim, the route, the the width of my room is just a little bit too tight. But if you want to see driver numbers in there as well, do hit me with a comment down below and I'll maybe even when I do the RB Tour one, I'll, uh, I'll get out on the golf course and do the driver swings as well with the GC2. So we'll be able to get those numbers there. But guys, that was the Mizuno RB Tour X golf ball. Let me know what you think. Is it something that you would consider playing or is it something where you would not consider at all? Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.